Welcome to the Creek Road Baptist Pulpit. These weekly podcasts feature expository messages delivered to edify the soul. Now let's join Pastor Dave as he presents this week's message. Numbers chapter 11 is our text this evening. This morning we are in chapter 12, the story of Miriam and Aaron and their rebellion. Tonight I wanted to look at Moses' prayer. I, I referenced it this morning, but there are, there are three different prayers in this 11th chapter. I really want to focus on two of them tonight. Let's begin reading, let's see, um, in verse 16. We're going to be all over the chapter, but we'll, we'll read a portion out of the center of the chapter, 16 through 23. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people, and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee there, and I will take the spirit which is upon thee, and will put it on them, put it upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself alone. And say thou unto the people, Sanctify yourselves against the morrow, and ye shall eat flesh, for ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. Ye shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten days, nor twenty days, but even a whole month, until it come out your nostrils, and it be loathsome to you. Because that ye have despised the Lord who is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why came we forth out of Egypt? And Moses said, The people among whom I am are six hundred thousand footmen. And thou hast said, I will give them flesh that they may eat a whole month. Shall the flocks and the herds be slain for them to suffice them, or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to suffice them? And the Lord said unto Moses, Is the Lord's hand waxed short? Thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. Adoniram Judson, one of my favorite missionaries of past generations, said, Be resolute in prayer. Make any sacrifice to maintain it. And boy, that's a good good watchword for praying, isn't it? So I really want to look at Moses' prayer, and then the people's prayer, if you can call the people's what they had to say a prayer. But really the chapter begins with prayer because if you notice in chapter 1, the people complained, it displeased the Lord, the Lord heard it, his anger was kindled, the fire of the Lord was kindled among them, it burnt them, consumed them, the people cried unto Moses, then Moses prayed unto the Lord and the fire was quenched. So we have just a, a very short episode here of judgment. The people complained, and then God sent his judging fire among them, and it burned around the outskirts of the camp. And the people who were being consumed cried out to Moses, and then Moses interceded for the people. That's prayer number one. But then prayer number two comes in verse four and five. We'll get to that in a minute. But let's let's first of all treat Moses' prayer. We talked about this This morning. So if you go back to verse 11, Moses heard the people weeping and they were, you know, sitting in the doorway of their tents and they were weeping because they didn't have any meat to eat. And in verse 11, Moses just finally just fed up with it. He goes to the Lord and he says, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? Wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight? that thou layest the burden of all this people upon me. Have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them that thou shouldest say unto me, Carry them in thy bosom as a nursing father beareth a suckling child unto the land which thou swearest unto their fathers? Whence should I have flesh to give unto all this people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. I am not able to bear all this people alone. Because it is too heavy for me. And if thou deal thus with me, kill me, I pray thee, out of hand. If I have found favor in thy sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. 
I quoted this passage this morning talking about Moses' meekness because verse 3 of chapter 12 tells us that the man Moses was very meek above all the men that were upon the face of the earth. And we talked about meekness and affliction and poorness and humility and, and really the, the, the negative aspect of meekness. It's, it's the brokenness. And here, this cry of Moses in chapter 11, beginning here in verse 11, is just a cry of brokenness. He is done. You can, and you can just hear it in his voice. He is done. He doesn't want anything else to do with these people. He even says to the Lord, where am I going to get meat? I don't have any meat to feed them, and yet they keep calling to me for meat. I, what am I to do? Please just kill me now. Just kill me now. So we understand his desperation. We understand the burden. Of, well, I mean, we don't understand it, but we can at least empathize with it. The burden that's on his shoulders. He feels like he has to be the one to meet every need. And so he makes this, really, it's a beautiful prayer. It's really not a very Southern Baptist prayer, though. This is a very Jewish prayer. Uh, the Jews have a tradition, a long tradition, of prayers of complaint. That's what they call them. They're prayers of complaint. You look in the Psalter, and it's almost every other, for a while there in the Psalter, it's almost every other psalm is a prayer of complaint. And the psalmist is complaining to the Lord. We don't do that very much when we pray. And I think probably we should maybe insert this practice into our prayer life a little bit because it's really, uh, it's a fine tradition and it's very biblical. We see Moses doing it here. If Moses did it, I'm sure that the Lord could stand if I complained some and just go before him and just lay it all out. Here it is. You know, there, there it all is nasty and everything. There's my complaint. And I, I just kill me now. You know, this is, this is the thing that's wrong and I can't fix it. That's the thing that Moses did when he made this really very beautiful prayer to the Lord. Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? So the meek man speaks here beginning in verse 11. So we have his prayer, and then we have verse 16. And the Lord treats Moses' request first. The Lord says, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be elders of the people and officers over them, Bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee there, and I will take the spirit which is upon thee and put it upon them, that they shall share, and they shall share the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself alone. So what does God do? He answers Moses' prayer. He says, I can't, look at verse 14, I am not able to bear all this people alone. And how does God answer that prayer? He says, all righty, how about 70 men? I mean, he gives him a detailed answer to prayer. 70 men, you're going to call them together. They're just not going to be anybody, but they're going to be the elders of the people. So you go out and you already know who you're going to ask because they're elders. These are officers of the people. You're going to bring them to the tabernacle. And look at verse 17. I will come down and talk with thee there. Isn't that beautiful? The the Lord's going to have a conversation with Moses in the presence of the 70. And he's going to take the spirit that is upon Moses and he's going to share it amongst all those 70 men who are standing around the inside of that place of worship. (laughs) So that thou shall not bear it thyself alone. So Moses just lays out this complaint, this this very beautiful prayer. It's very emotional. It's very heartfelt. We, I mean, it's got everything in it. And the Lord, how does he answer it? He answers it specifically. Okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to give 70 men, elders of Israel, you're going to bring them to the tabernacle. I'm going to talk to you. I will take the spirit from you and put it on them so that they will help you bear. And notice the language there. He's, he says there in 17, that thou bear it not thyself alone. When did this get answered? We are now in chapter 11 of the book of Numbers. You can go back to chapter 1. The Lord said to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, so they're somewhere around Mount Sinai. You can go back to the book of Exodus, and you can read in the book of Exodus beginning in chapter 40 and go all the way back to chapter 13. When did this occur? Was it sometime right after 
the Exodus? Was it sometime as they were crossing the Red Sea? Was it sometime as they were approaching the Mount? Was it sometime after he had received the law? When did Moses get this answer to his prayer? He got it when he prayed. He could have had it earlier. But oh no, Moses felt like he had to carry this burden all by himself, all the way up until this point. And when he prays the prayer, here in chapter 11, what does God do? Answers the prayer. Do you know our problem with prayer is? We don't. That's our problem with prayer. We don't. Because if we did, he would answer. We think that he's not answering our prayer because we're not praying. And he's not. He's not answering our prayer because we're not praying. But we think we're praying. We think God should know, and he does. But do you know what he wants? He wants Moses to get angry enough and broken enough and meek enough so that he'll get up on his feet with the courage of a man and just say, Hey, I am sick and tired of this mess. Would you please do something about it? Sometimes we have to get to that place. Until we run out of our own strength, until we run out of our own ability, until we run out of our own power, until he breaks us, until we can't stand it anymore, that's when he answers our prayer. Because usually, ladies and gentlemen, that's when we pray. Is when we just don't have any place else to go. Listen to Moses. He says in verse 13, When should I have flesh to give unto all this people? I can't do this. I can't do this. Now, God's going to deal with the flesh thing in just a minute. But he's, he's like, I don't, I, I, the burden's too great. The people are too crazy. I can't do it anymore. I can't. Just kill me now. And the Lord says, okay. We finally got here, did we? Here's the answer. Seventy men, elders of Israel, bring them to the tabernacle. I'll talk with you, and I'll give them a portion of your spirit. So, even in the answer, this is something that only God can do. And did you notice there in reading this? Moses never questioned that answer at all. He never, he never said, well, how are you going to do that? Give them a portion of my, the spirit that's on. He never asked any questions about that. Never. Never said anything to the Lord about the spirit being distributed amongst the people. That's God's work. And Moses never questioned that. He was just so glad that there was now a plan. And it wasn't his, and he didn't have to execute it. He was just so glad now that the Lord, but I think it was the Lord that was glad that Moses had finally asked. Sometimes our deepest secrets, sometimes our heaviest burdens are heavy and deep only because we've not asked. We've not asked. And, by the way, this is historically significant because this is the creation of the Great Council. The Sanhedrin of Jesus' day would point back to Numbers chapter 11 and say, that's when it all began for us, the Sanhedrin, the ruling council of the Jews. Back there at the mountain with Moses and those 70 elders. That was a, they would, they, they would have said that was the greatest generation. And then that tradition was passed down to the next generation, to the next generation, and to the next generation, and so forth. So this is a very historically significant passage. Okay, so that's Moses' prayer. It's beautiful. It's heartfelt. It's just, you know, he just lays it all out, finally broken enough to say, I can't do it anymore, God. And the Lord says, here's your answer. And it comes right at the time when Moses needs it and at the time when Moses asks. So the answer comes when the prayer is made. But then I want you to notice the people's prayer. And as I said, this one's not as easy to classify, you know. Moses' prayer is a lament. It's a, it's a complaint prayer. And should be classified that the people's prayer is, I don't know, how to, I just don't know what to say about it. Verse 4 is the people's prayer. The mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting, and the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. 
But now our soul is...